Hello everyone, welcome back to Fulgrim Gaming's Let's Play of Kingdom Hearts. In this episode, I'm going to go straight into the accessory shop, and I do kind of like how they show what shop you're about to go into, or whatever door you're going to go in. Usually at the bottom of the screen, they'll have some sort of, you know, label. Now here we have Sid. Hey there, how can I... Aw, oh, it's only a kid. I'm not a kid, and the name's Sora. Okay, okay, simmer down. So why the long face, Sora? Are you lost or something? No, well, maybe. Where are we? Huh? And apparently through that entire, you know, two second black screen, Sora was able to explain to him that Traverse Town is another world or that's what he, you know, gathered from him. And I've never understood why. He calls him Gramps right here. To me, and I'm just going to skip past most of this because it's not all that important, but to me, Sora was not really the type of character to disrespect other people. And I know we're not really, like, we haven't talked, to, we haven't been with Sora for that long. I think we might be about an hour into the game. But for some reason, I just didn't take Sora for the kind of guy to call, you know, his elder Gramps. I'm not sure why. Now, up here, I believe there's a Mithril Shard or Mithril something up here. Mithril Shard. And the reason that's up there, I think, is because when we... I think I'm introducing these things on the floor right here, the Trinity Marks. We can't get to this one yet, but what that does is allow this ladder up here to fall down. And there's actually a synthesis... Oh, my, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this, am I? Synthesis Shop up there. It's almost a tongue twister. And what that allows you to do, if you've played a lot of Final Fantasy games, or at least Final Fantasy IX, that's the only one I can really think of that had a synthesis sh synthesis shop in it, what that allows you to do is make, you know, stronger weapons out of, like, base component parts or whatever. Here is actually the other entrance, and it's closed off, but there's... Apparently the Moogles run this shop, so that's kind of cool. Now, there's actually a way we can get on top of the accessory shop here, and I'm not sure how you're supposed to do it. I think you're, you might... you might should wait until you have the high jump or whatever they call it in this game where you can jump higher but what i've always done is just put a box right here and i'm not even sure if the box is necessary but you can just jump straight up on top of the house and the reason that is important is because you can jump over here i cannot believe i just made that jump and then make another jump here and come get a hidden treasure chest with a postcard in it and in the last episode, I believe I got that postcard in the fan that I forgot to, you know, mail back. So let's go ahead and stuff our, you know, postcard in this mailbox with looks like it has a tongue on the front. Send 10 postcards to win something. Good luck. And we don't really have to send 10 things to win something. Every time we send in something, we get something. The first thing we get is a cottage, which I'll explain in a second, and a mithril shard. Apparently we get two of those right off the bat. But what the Mithril Shard, or what the Cottage actually is, is kind of like the tent in Final Fantasy VII, where if you use it in the... I'm Now that I remember, or think about it, I think in Final Fantasy... The reason I'm not going through here is because there's a cutscene, by the way. But in Final Fantasy VII, a tent if at a safe spot, I believe, would heal everybody's HP and MP. In this game, a tent is more individual, and the Cottage is the same thing as the, is the same thing as a tent from that game. So let's go ahead and watch this cutscene. It's kind of short. Now, I believe, first of all, apparently if you have a text box with, like, spikes on it, I'm not even sure, like, a, a staggered text box like that, apparently that means he's yelling, I just, I don't know why, and now we're getting money, by the way, the gold little balls on the ground, pretty sure those are gold, by the way, they could be green for all I know, but th what that is is actually money, which is, like I've mentioned before, the currency in this game, and that little sequence right there, man, I just cannot hit these guys, can I? But that sequence right there, I think, was a pretty good, you know, introduction to the fact, or, like, it reinforces the fact that, you know, Heartless take hearts. That guy obviously lost his heart and turned into a Heartless. So what I'm gonna do is actually grind just a tiny bit in this area, because there's a lot of Heartless out here, and I want to get to, apparently, oh, I forgot, you can't, oh, great. I was gonna say, let me show you what level I am, and I'll try and get to the next highest level, whatever that is. But, since we're in a fight, we can't actually enter the pause menu, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and grind, like, one more level. Alright guys, I didn't grind up another level quite, and the reason I'm not, you know, just going to another area, because I'm defeating all the Heartless in this area as we speak, the reason I'm not, I don't want to leave this area is because there's a couple cutscenes that I want you guys to see, like, that happen when you leave areas. But before I do that, there's actually, if I can jump up here, I believe there is another postcard in this box, and this was actually the first postcard I ever saw, and one of the only ones that I ever got, you know, in my first playthrough. 
And yes, it is a postcard. And I'm not sure what that gives you when you turn it in. I'm going to guess like a, a mega potion or whatever they call them in this game. You know, that type of item. But anytime you leave the screen in this area, I believe we're going to be getting another glimpse of Gon Donald and Goofy. Classic, you know, Disney style, I guess. You go in one door, you know, the person that's looking for you comes out the other door. And all of the doors, speaking of doors, in this hotel are blocked off or closed or, you know, closed off or whatever you want to call it. And we can't go into any of them right now. But actually, before the end of this episode, we're probably going to be going in those. Now, up here, apparently, there's more Heartless. But to my right, there's what I think is called the Gizmo Shop. And there is a Lucid Shard, which is a kind of like a low-level synthesis item. But apparently, wow, I just got, you know, the word synthesis right. But let's go ahead and go in the gizmo shop. And oh yeah, I forgot. Every time you leave the screen, you know, Donald and Goofy comes out from another area. I thought they just said, wait, where is she? I was going to say, wait a minute. And why is he yelling for Leon? Oh, we haven't even met Leon in this game yet, I don't think. But the gizmo shop is one of my favorite places to grind later in the game. I'm not sure if it's such a good area right now. Alright guys, sorry about that, I had a little interruption, but yeah, what I was saying was, I'm not, I wasn't sure if the gizmo shop was really a good place to grind at a low level, or you know, not having gone through the game much at all, but it looks like these guys keep respawning, so it does look like an actually, a pretty good place to, you know, level up. So what I am going to do, like this, you know, like I said before, I'm going to grind up one more level, because we're going to be having sort of a little bit of a difficult boss fight. I mean, the thing is, like, it doesn't matter if we win or lose the fight, but I kind of want to win it, so I'm going to get one more level. Alright, just got my level up. By the way, I want to fight at least one more of these things. Please spawn at least one more. Did I really just kill the last one? The reason I want to fight one more is because I was not able to kill those things in one combo like I was able to on Destiny Islands. But, now that I got the strength upgrade, I'm wondering if I can. Let's go ahead and try this out. There we go. Now we can still kill the weakest of Heartless in one combo. Now, I forgot. The reason I came back out here, by the way, is because I forgot an item up here. And I'm not even sure what this is. This might be the... The mega potion that I was talking about a second ago. By the way, guys, I forgot... Actually, I probably have mentioned this. You have to not be in a fight to be able to open treasure chests. And apparently I'm not going to be able to jump over there, by the way. But the reason I just cut that out or speed it up or whatever I decided to do is actually because I couldn't open it unless I, you know, took out the Heartless. So let's see if I was right about that mega potion. Mega potion. And I believe that heals... It just pretty much like any other Final Fantasy game, what it does is heal, you know, everybody in your party. We don't obviously have anybody in our party right now, but hopefully that'll be about to change before the end of this episode. And obviously Donald and Goofy are going to be in our party. I think that's pretty obvious at this point. What level am I, by the way? Seven. I think... I know I'm going to be cutting out a lot, but I think I'm going to go ahead and grind to level 9, by the way, because the reason I want to do that is I'm going to be getting a new ability, and I don't have any abilities yet, and I kind of want to have at least my first one before I fight that boss, so I'll see you guys in a second. And apparently the Heartless are not going to spawn in here again, not really sure what the conditions are for them spawning again, but let's go ahead and continue. I think we are going to be going in the Dalmatian's house now, if I... Oh, well, might as well go ahead and show you the ladder. This ladder, by the way, kind of wobbly. Guess I can't climb it now. Eventually in the game, that'll be put up over here against this wall right here, and we'll be able to climb on top of the... I'm not sure if this is a... It looks like a church to me. Let me look at it. Not at the ground. I get the controls mixed up on that all the time. But it looks like a church. But apparently it's a gizmo shot. Maybe there's a church that I'm not remembering in some other opening. Obviously, well, not maybe not obviously, this door, you can't go in. It looks like you might be able to go in there, but you can't. Over here is the Dalmatian's house, though. And up there, as soon as we left that area, they come out. Not here, either. This could take a while. I bet you it does in classic Disney fashion, like I said. But, like I said, again, here we are in the Dalmatian's house. And if I remember correctly, are the parent Dalmatians named, like, Pongo and... Oh, man, I can't remember the other one. But, anyway, they have lost their 99 Dalmatians. I guess the 101 Dalmatians come in when you add the two parents, but you can go through the house. There's really not anything in here right now, and the only reason you might want to come in here later in the game is because you get, as you turn in the Dalmatians that you find, usually you find them, actually I think maybe all the time you find them in groups of three, so you don't have to find like all 99 separately, it comes in like 33, you know, separate, 33 instances of finding the Dalmatians or whatever. But when you go in there, you actually get some items and stuff. And they're actually substantial rewards and not like, you know, the gold rupee, for instance, in the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And by the way, if you came... 
or if you watch the Ocarina of Time Let's Play, I know that you can keep replenishing that 200 rupee, by the way, that gold rupee, but, I mean, you could just go to the market and get unlimited rupees, by the way, without having to find 100 gold skeletons. You know what would have been cool? Maybe, like, there's a, like, oh, I don't even know. There's so many things they could have done with that. Maybe another sword, another shield, maybe a new shield and a new sword, maybe, like, a new side quest, maybe a new... Maybe Black Gauntlets, I know that's like a, a popular Game Shark code, I don't know, there just could have been something other than something I can go get in the market. But anyway, I'm done ranting on The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, because that is an awesome game, and I just finished the Let's Play of it. But the reason I went ahead and took them out, is because there are a couple of treasure chests up here, I'm not even sure what's in these. A regular, apparently a regular potion. Now there's another kind of sneaky, hidden treasure chest all the way at the end of this, and I hope no more Heartless spawn. But here is actually the other side of one of those doors, and I like how they close those off, because if we go in there, they're actually, like, you know, story characters we're not supposed to be talking to right now. And I've never understood, like, can you go in the blue room? I'm not sure if you can or not. There's a red and a green that I know you can go in, but I'm never really sure about the blue room. Every time I play the game, I forget if you can go in there or not. But let's go ahead and see what this is. A pretty stone. So that's one of the two pretty stones in Traverse Town, and like I said, I'm not... I wasn't going to race Riku 97 times to add up to 99, but here's another one, and a regular potion, so nothing too spectacular here. I seem to remember like a red trinity being somewhere over here, but I could be completely misremembering, and apparently like you can't even get rid of that, you know, box right there. I thought it was under that box for some reason, but I, apparently I'm completely, you know, hallucinating. Right Let me go ahead and take care of these guys. Man, my, you know, Kingdom Hearts senses are kind of off lately. It seems like every time I get into a fight, I always think it's going to last longer than it actually does. But it seems like, if I remember correctly, there, I think we might be able to go back to Sid now and talk to him about, you know, continuing. If you didn't catch what that cutscene was saying earlier, basically, Sora was telling Sid that he couldn't find his friends, you know, Riku and Kairi, and he told us to look around town or whatever. And I think we've gone, we went in the hotel, we went in the gizmo shop, we went in the Dalmatian's house, and I'm pretty sure, like I said, I'm pretty sure that's all we have to do to be able to progress in the story. So I'm going to meet you guys back in the accessory shop. Alright guys, here we are. Let's see if Sid will actually tell us, you know, how to continue. Still haven't found him? Keep your chin up. Take another look around town. What do I need? Uh, let's see. I wonder if he has anything to say if we chat with him. Oh, that's exactly what you just told me. That's completely useless, but I don't have any... Well, actually, I do have some money, but I don't think I want to buy anything right yet. If we try and leave, I believe we're going to get a cutscene. They'll come at you out of nowhere. Who are you? And they'll keep on coming at you. As long as you continue to wield the Keyblade. But why? Why would it choose a kid like you? Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Never mind. Now, let's see that Keyblade. What? There's no way you're getting this. All right. Then have it your way. That's right, guys. Leon Squall, or Squall Lion, Leonhard, or however you pronounce his name or whatever, is actually one of our first bosses here, and he is actually pretty hard. I don't know that I've ever beaten a man. He's actually, like, really hard now that I think about it. I should have gotten ahead and got the guard ability. Like, look at this. He's just completely, like, wiping the floor with me. I think if you beat him, you actually get, like... I think you get an elixir or something like that, so it's not, like, a huge deal if you don't win. But I still would like to win, and at the current rate of, you know, me using my potions, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to win. Luckily, I did level up just a tiny bit to get that strength upgrade, or I probably would not be able to... Are you kidding me? Leon went down that fast? Oh, you're slipping, Leon. No! I went easy on him. Why is she in this game? Looks like things are worse than we thought. A lot worse. Gorsh, there's nobody here. Sure is spooky. I'm going. I'm not scared. <laughs> Excuse me, did the king send you? She lives? 
Way to play with my emotions, Squaresoft. Come on. Come on, lazy bum. Wake up. <clears throat> you okay? Uh, I guess. Those creatures that attacked you are after the Keyblade. But it's your heart they really want. Because you wield the Keyblade. I'm so glad that you're okay, Kyrie. Kyrie? Who are you talking about? I'm the great ninja Yuffie. Hmm? I think you might have overdone it, Squall. That's Leon. The Keyblade. Yeah. We had to get it away from you to shake off those creatures. It turns out, that's how they were tracking you. It was the only way to conceal your heart from them. But it won't work for long. Still, hard to believe that you, of all people, are the chosen one. Oh. Well, I suppose beggars can't be choosers. Why don't you start making sense? What's going on here? Okay. You know there are many other worlds out there, besides your castle in this town, right? Yeah. But they're supposed to be a secret. They've been secret, because they've never been connected. Until now. When the Heartless came, everything changed. The Heartless? The ones who attacked you, you remember? Those without hearts. The darkness in people's hearts. That's what attracts them. And there is darkness within every heart. Hey, have you heard of someone named Ansem? I am Sam? He was studying the Heartless. He recorded all of his findings in a very detailed report. Gorge! Oh, can we see it? Its pages are scattered everywhere. Scattered? Too many worlds. Oh, then maybe the king went to find them. Yes, those were my thoughts exactly. We've got to find them quick! Red! That's right. The Keyblade. So, this is the key. Exactly. The Heartless have great fear of the Keyblade. That's why they'll keep coming after you, no matter what. Well, I didn't ask for this. The Keyblade chooses its master, and it chose you. So, tough luck. How did all this happen? I remember being in my room. <gasps> Wait a minute! What happened to my home? My island? Riku! Kyrie! You know what? I really don't know. Alright guys, first of all, why is Yuffie in this game? Come on, I mean I'm glad they brought back Aerith. Apparently her name is Aerith, it's like a, re a reverse lisp in this game. In Final Fantasy VII, if for those of you who might not have played that game, her name was actually Aerith and not Aerith. But anyway, let's go ahead and talk to Yuffie real quick. I heard that the Keyblade can open all sorts of locks. Give it a try the next time you find a treasure chest or door lock. Apparently, you know, I've always thought that the Keyblade was sort of like a universal key, but there are actually things it can't open, which we'll see. But luckily, you know, there's a key hole on this treasure chest, which is kind of weird. I've never seen a key like that before, you know, emanating light from it, or a keyhole, I mean. We can actually open it now. And apparently it had an elixir in it. But the reason we were able to open that is because we talked to Yuffie. I believe if you don't talk to Yuffie before that, I don't think you actually get to open it. But I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here, guys, because there is actually a pretty long boss fight coming up. And I kind of want that to have its own... I want to wrap up Traverse Town all in one episode. So I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts. And I want to see you guys back for the next episode.